Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of Triple Play. Please remember to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. That's right. And if you do, we might just have them what? A sign ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to have some sign balls. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you some stuff. Just sign up and, and wait, and we'll get you some stuff. Well, and we got a lot of cool things going on. Um, so and with that, don't forget to uh, check in with our man, Andy McCollum with Resource One. Uh, if you have any uh, financial planning needs, he is the man to call. His number is 636-458-1798. And uh, on top of that, if you have any website tech needs, uh, make sure you give CS Design. They did our intro, outro, the soon-to-coming website, and their number is... Uh, we have Chris in house even, yeah, yeah. but their number is 573-436-3717. And uh, you guys can uh, check them out and uh, uh, make sure to, to let them know that you, you, you listen to our podcast so they know that we sent you. Um, all that said, uh, we are excited about today's episode. We're going we're gonna to have Trace on here in just a second. And when we do, uh, it's going to be uh, the wonderful life of Trace. That's right. Trace Thompson. Yeah. So... And uh, you and him, you guys have gone back a while, haven't you? Yeah, so he, I knew Trace when he was with the White Sox originally. Uh, we did some instructs, end of season training. Uh, the White Sox and the Dodgers share a spring training facility. So, yeah, it's been going on probably 10 plus years I've known him. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And he, he was really an up and coming player for a long time. And then he kind of, you mentioned he got some back issues. And yeah. now he seems like, as he, as he says, uh, he's been cl cl uh, clawing his way back. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, um, we w I, I think he's going to have a big year. I've been watching his swing during the uh, uh, World Baseball Classic, and he's looking really good right now. I mean, he, he, he's, he's dialed, you can tell when a player's dialed in. He's had several great hits, key hits in games. Um, you know, team Britain's got to be happy to have him on their team uh, for a leadership point of view, but also uh, for that bat. He's looking really, really good. Yeah. Um, so Super athletic, super good uh, head on his shoulders. I mean, he said when he talks about fighting and calling back, like he, he was, like you talked about, he was going to be a solid um, guy that had a chance to play every day, and then he hurt his back real bad. Um, it's been a few years since he's gotten a chance to come back, but – you listen to him talk, you'll find out how he was able to just persevere. He's very level-headed, very uh, goal-oriented, so he doesn't let things distract him. Well, with that said, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be right back with him on. Yeah, we titled this The Wonderful Life of Trace Thompson. <laughs> because you're wonderful. That's right. Yeah. So, Trace, you're in the WBC now, right? First go-around, what, what are your thoughts? First game, opening game. You're you're running on the field. What are you thinking? Man, it, it, the well, the routine of everything is kind of crazy, especially in this these pool plays. Uh, I've heard in the next round it gets better, but and you know how the a major league or a normal game schedule or normal day looks like um, for a game day. Like game was at seven. We weren't allowed to be there till like three thirty or four o'clock. Wow. And for me. That's like nightmare. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So it was just kind of hectic to start. But once you get out to the game, man, the game, the atmosphere, especially start with USA, couldn't really ask for much better. Um, mm -hmm. And in in Arizona at Chase Field, a lot of a lot of fans showed up, so it was pretty cool. Um, and like we were talking about earlier, it definitely beats spring train, in my opinion. Um, I I think there's a time and place for spring train for sure. I've always struggled in spring training too, so. I don't know if it's just, just the environment or what what have you. You know, last year I got two hits in spring training and I went out to have the hard, hottest start of my career. So I don't know what it is, but um, but yeah, it, the the games have been a lot more fun um, the last couple of days. You know, against Canada, that game against Canada was tough for us, but mm -hmm. and then yes, yesterday against Colombia um, was was a fun game, mm -hmm. um, but. It, but it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, and obviously, well, maybe not obvious to everybody else, but you're on Great Britain's team. Tell us how you got to be on that that team. <laughs> and, and then once you once we've arrived at how you became a Great Britain player, 
T talk to us about your uh, your uniforms, but start with how you got in Great Britain. <laughs> Scott's big on his uniform thing. Oh, he's I he's just, curious I about just it. I can't, and I, so, and I know <laughs> Trace, and I know he has an opinion on their uniforms. <laughs> Honestly, well, I'll talk about the affiliation first. But my dad is from the Bahamas. He's born and raised in the Bahamas. Lived there up until he was a junior in high school, and went to high school in Miami, and then went to Minnesota University of Minnesota for college. But um, he's from the Bahamas. He's Bahamian. Uh, one of seven uh, kids, so we've got a lot of cousins, aunts and uncles that all still live in the Bahamas. And so uh, the Bahamas is a commonwealth of uh, the UK. And so um, all the Bahamians, there's, there's probably eight or nine Bahamians on this team. And so um, it's been pretty cool to kind of connect with them and to connect with the rest of the guys with ties to the UK, obviously. But for me personally, to connect with other Bahamians has been uh, really special because uh, the Bahamas hasn't been known as a baseball country, but recently there's been a lot of talent to come out of the Bahamas. So it's been kind of an exciting time to be a Bahamian baseball player. And so I'm really, I'm sure this team in, in three years, four years, or, or even in eight years, there's going to be a ton of Bahamians and it's going to be really cool for the country of the Bahamas. Um, as far as the jerseys, I never thought that much of it. Maybe it's just because I was so focused on like playing the game. Um, yeah. And then my phone was kind of blowing up about how, how brutal our jerseys were. And I, I saw that our pitcher, the, the T fell off his jersey yesterday. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't mind the jerseys. Um, I'm sure that they could have gone a little wilder with them. Like I look at the Puerto Rico team and the Dominican and the Venezuelan team and um, they're kind of, even the, I think Colombia has some sweet jerseys, but, uh, and Mexico, obviously probably, Mexico probably has my favorite jerseys, honestly. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I hadn't thought. Yeah, I, you know, I hadn't thought much of it. Um, you know, this is their first year, so give them a mulligan. Maybe, maybe in three years or four years, whatever the next one is, they'll they'll come with some better stuff for you, Slaky. There you go. Well, just just <laughs> just make a uniform where the stickers don't fall off. You know what I mean? Like that's all we're asking. That's all we're asking. Yeah, I, I mean, I would be more hard pressed on them had we had the schedule. I'm telling you, the scheduling is crazy, man. It's crazy. Like tonight, we're not going to be able to get in there until this game's over. This plan right now, and so it's just it's just weird days. I kind of give them uh, the benefit of the doubt here. Trace, that's very kind of you. That's very British of you. <laughs> but they've had four years. They've had four years. They've known about this tournament for four years. That's all they got to well, do. They, is they get only the, qualified the right like there. they only qualified either this this fall or the previous fall so all right well i, I one listen, year again well, I, I, I appreciate you sticking up for your for your team but their uniforms stink okay I, they've had plenty of time for that not to be the case all right i've got a question for trace all right this is an important question being a st louisan you're first at bat i was watching it <laughs> you go yard on my boy adam wainwright how did that feel and how did it feel to have the crown and be the first one to wear that with that cape yeah that thing's sweet I had no idea that was a thing. Uh, so Seriously? They just, so they just kind of, yeah, they just kind of ambushed me with that. Um, I, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I was just kind of like, you know, we don't, we're playing against the Monstars to open up the, the tournament. And um, we get on the board early, the, the crowd goes quiet. I just, you know, it's like he knows me, I'm not one to get. I'll have my moments where I get fired up, but I wanted to show those young guys and these young guys that are on this team, guys that haven't been in the big leagues, like, hey, man, we can we can compete with these guys. Like, let's just compete. Like, we're not backing down. Like, kind of like, like keep your cool. And then, I get, then I'm getting closer to the dugout, and I see, the, I see they want to crown me. <laughs> and then I see a cape and a sword, and I'm like, what is going on right now? But... I know that the young guys are having a fun time with it, and I'm sure social media is blowing up with it. But, uh, but yeah, it was uh, – I don't know. He just left a curveball right there. Um, you know, Wayne, Wayne was obviously having an amazing career. I remember watching him buckle Beltron in the, in the uh, mm -hmm. NLCS, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the year. It had to be like 06 or something like that. But, I mean, he's awesome, man. Uh, I have a ton of respect for him as a human being and as a player, as a competitor. and. Um, it's, he's still a really good pitcher. So this is the first time. I think I may face him one other time, maybe. But it was really kind of maybe my first few at-bats off of him. So 
Um, you have to put respect on everything because he can pitch. He just knows how to pitch, even though he doesn't have that overpowering stuff. He used to, you still have to respect his fastball because he knows what to do with it. And mm-hmm. he just kind of left the curveball right there. And I've been kind of, and spring training, it's like he knows how it works. You're always kind of tweaking and searching and this and that. And so I, I've been, I've been going through that. And so to kind of put put a couple good swings on some balls the last few days has, has felt better. Yeah, you've looked really good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, so I mean. Like you just said, spring training's about getting ready. It's really easy to get into numbers. It's really easy to get into all these things. But, um, yeah, if you hit a ball over the fence, it's usually a good swing. So That was a great yeah. swing. I, like, right. I really liked, more than the home run, that line drive you hit up the middle on the off-speed pitch. Oh, yeah. That's that's a good sign. When I when you start seeing guys staying off speed like that, I think I think you can be confident that you're. Well, you're with the shift the going, right yeah. yeah. With the shift going, though, you're going to see more nice, you know, drives up there between uh, third and second. So. Yeah, I mean, for a hundred years, a, a line drive up the middle was a hit, and, and the last I don't I don't know four or five years, it's been it's been pretty much an automatic out. And so, it'll be cool to see it come back. I mean, you think like I. I think about, you know, being a kid and, and Little League and you just – every coach tells you hit the ball up the middle, hit the ball up the middle because there's nobody there. And, and so it's just – and it's like he knows you get in the offseason, you're hitting in the cage, especially if you are if you don't have, you know, these big, nice facilities that a lot of kids have now. You're hitting in this cage and you want to see that ball go right through the – you want that backspin ball, line drive right up the middle. And so the last few years, that's an out. And so uh, – It'll be cool to see it, you know, kind of become back to a positive. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you mentioned something there about playing uh, ball when you were younger. Have you always played ba- baseball? Because I know you're from a basketball family. Your your brother's kind of made a name for himself, and your dad obviously part of a great dynasty. So um, how did how did you get into baseball? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think I, I know we're a basketball family, but I think. When we were kids, it was just like we're just a sports family because we did everything growing awesome. up. Awesome. Uh, and my dad never pushed us towards anything. Uh, where we grew up, we grew up in Portland, Oregon, and everybody did everything. And so, um, you know, I went from ba- uh, football season to basketball season to baseball season and then repeat in the summer. So it was uh, it was it was an awesome childhood. We played soccer before before we started playing football when we were like seven or eight, and so. Um, we, we literally did everything, and uh, you know, my dad got us into golf when we were pretty young too. And um, so, it, we we had a ton of interest, not just in in sports, but just being outside. We were we were outdoors kids, and we just loved being outside. And, um, but baseball was ever since I played t-ball, baseball's always seemed to kind of be my 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 one love. And hmm. It was always synonymous, no matter what I did. Uh, you know, wh- whether we were in football season or basketball season, I would come home. And go grab my bats. Like, I love I love playing football. I love playing basketball. I still love throwing the football around, or still love going to shoot and stuff. But when I was a kid, I, I always seemed to come home and, and always gravitate towards my bats and want to go swing in the mirror, or go outside and play wiffle ball, or do something. And so, um, it's been my it's been my biggest passion since I can remember. And um, you know, grew up a huge Mariners fan, obviously in the Northwest, and those guys had a huge impact on my childhood too, as well. And so. Um, but yeah, I credit my parents for not pushing us towards any, not just, not just any sport specifically, but towards sports in general. They just brought us around. I, I, I was always around my oldest brother, and you know, they just kind of let us choose our own path. Does uh, do I? Am I remembering this right? Your your mom's athletic as well, right? Or am I making? That? Yeah, she played. Yeah, yeah, she did track and volleyball, um, and then then college just volleyball. And so, she's always been you know, the sports mom and mm-hmm. she's not going to be the mom that's yelling at the games or anything like that. But she's always, you know, if I, if I need if I need a new bat, I'm, my dad's not taking me, my, my mom's <laughs> taking me. If I need if I need a new glove, my mom's going to ask the coach questions about the glove or something like that. If we want a new sneakers, my mom's the one that, that knows the, that knows the, the plug at Foot Locker or something like that. So, uh, or, or at Nike down the street, you know, grow up in Portland. And so, uh, yeah, my mom, she was everything to us. Wow. 
So is that a way that you kind of connect it with Scott, is having a multi-generational family? I mean, Scott's dad did really well, uh, obviously, and, and your dad did really well. Is that something you guys kind of connected over? I'm just curious. You know, I, I my first remembrance of Scott was in instructional league um, when he had the handlebar mustache <laughs> and this giant leg kick. And, um, and then the next year, I, I'm, I think I was in major league camp or may, maybe I was backing up a major league game and he was in major league camp and he had this huge year in double A. But my first remembrance of him was in instructional league, just as like a Dodgers player. And, you know, at the time, the only thing you really had was baseball America. And so if you, if you weren't listed as one of those top guys, I remember D Gordon was the top guy. And, um, there's a few other guys, but um, I remember hearing Slyke's name because he was drafted. I think my brother's, my oldest brother, Slyke, were you 05? Yeah. High school? Yeah. I remember because, you know, that was a huge draft class because with Justin Upton and McCutcheon and those guys. And I remember seeing Slyke's name to the Dodgers because we lived in Southern California. But my first remembrance of him was really seeing him and meeting with him and playing with him and instructionally when I was really young I probably didn't say a word <laughs> and I was just kind of in awe of him and Kyle Russell and D Gordon and, and everything but I remember him in spring training the next couple of years in big league camp then he got to the big leagues and then he was this really good player for the Dodgers and um, I, I just remember he was always funny his, his sense of, I love I love comedy and his sense of humor always was always something that attracted not just me but everybody everybody loves like he won I'm sure if you ask anybody that came through the Dodgers from 2012 till or 2011 till 2017, they'd say Scott's one of their favorite teammates they've ever had. And so it's no different for me. Slyke, he's my guy. And, um, I'm sure his upbringing was somewhat similar to mine. I think he was around more. Um, like I think his dad was was still an active player that he could you know remember. Like my dad retired uh, when I was one or when I was two, and so I don't I don't remember him as a player, but I definitely remember going to games with him as a broadcaster and stuff. But, you know, growing up in the game, I'm sure we, we, have, we have similar mentalities and, and heartbeats when it comes to sports and stuff. And so that's something that we've always kind of, kind of like an unspoken bond that him and I have. But his sense of humor, man, and just as him as a human being has always drawn us together, in my opinion. Really? Well said. So Hotfoot, was he a part of Hot? Were you a part of Hotfoot, by the way? Huh? Part of what? No, uh, were, were you, you were on, I think you might have been hurt when I was getting hot-footed. There was like a month in 2014 when I was getting pranked literally like every other day. And no, I was, I, was, I was a white sock man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, I, so Instructional League, that is, I mean, you know, anybody, go, you go to Instructional League, it's like, it's, it almost feels like punishment. We, you know, obviously it's not we're all there to get better, but when you're in these instructional league games, it's like what anything to make it feel like this isn't the worst, <laughs> worst three hours of my life, 105 degrees, open dugouts. Um, so the fact, you know, I'm, I, I'm glad I can make those games a little bit better. That, honestly, <laughs> when I showed up to the game, my whole goal was just to make it fun for everybody. <laughs> Anyway, any way I could yell in anything. Did you, were you the one that, there's a story, the one story, so like you were telling me about the first time you met in Instructs. There's a guy I played with in Instructs, and I'll always remember hearing the first time that, we, you know, we kind of connected was that we were on Instructional's backfield, you know, like on the backfields in Instructional League, and he was on the, the field to the side of us. And we were doing outfield drills, and they were doing outfield drills. And the, he heard, overheard the coach just said, like, I don't – he was getting frustrated. I was like, I don't care where you throw it. I don't care how you throw it, but I need to hear you. So me being a smartass, <laughs> got the fly ball and turned and just chucked it over the center field wall onto the other field and said, coming home. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy's first memory is me being a smart ass, yelling, coming home, throwing in the opposite field, making fun of a coach. That's so. great. 
I'm glad that, yeah, that, wasn't, that, was, that wasn't my yeah yeah it wasn't me, that wasn't me. <laughs> that's awesome so yeah. you so a little bit more of a mainstay on the Dodgers this year I, I presume all things go like I think they will uh you you get to hear your brother talk a lot about you on the media do you think that you're going to incorporate some some back and forth this year through the media that you can kind of start poking your brother a little bit is that is that on your horizon? Have you thought about that? I'm maybe I'm bringing this up for you so you can do some future planning. <laughs> yeah, you know I don't know. I feel like my sense of humor kind of uh, like I'm pretty sarcastic, and sometimes I think it flies right over Clay's head. So <laughs> uh, that might make it funnier. And, and so I might say something funny. Hopefully that he hears it, and then maybe he, I'm I'm sure he hears it. I'm sure someone says something to him. He's just like. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, he's, but he, uh, funny, right? he's got a sense of humor. Well, he, he is though, funny. Maybe? He doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily, and he, he's funnier than he comes off. But I think, uh, I, I just think that, uh, I don't know. I, I know he gets a little cliche ish when he starts to talk about me and my dad and, uh, and, uh, and Mikey and my mom in the media. And so, and Rocco even. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure when we play the Giants, there's there's always a thing. Yeah. Uh, or whenever they're in L.A. in the summer because they, they come down a lot. And so so we'll see. But I'm sure there's always something. I mean, he came to our game uh, against the Giants in, in L.A. last summer, and they acted like it was the biggest deal in the world. And I remember Steph came to a game, and I, and I got a hit, and the media was at my locker afterwards. I, I literally pinch hit and got a hit, and they wanted to talk to me about – Steph being there to watch me. I'm like, there's nothing to talk about here. I just got to hit. <laughs> Steph says, here. What, what? okay, the big deal. You know? Uh, yeah, that yeah, has to be a little bit annoying, I'm sure I imagine. Whenever, that... Clay is there, whenever Clay is there, they, they make a deal of it, and I get it, but at the same time, it's like, what what, what is there you know, more to say exactly? Yeah. So, do, so if they win, if Golden State wins and then the Dodgers win, who gets bragging rights at the house, though? Uh, I think us as a family. I don't, I don't think that there's a, I don't, well, that's true. I don't think that it's a, exactly, it's a, exactly. I don't think it's a brother versus brother thing. I think it's Thompson's versus everybody thing. But uh, no, I mean, we're the we're each other's biggest fans. Um, you know, I I want him to. It, it's funny how people that this. I don't know if it's an American culture or what, but man. People heckle me about my brother. I'm like, thank you. Like, you don't think I want him to be a Hall of Famer? You don't think I want him to, you know, make the all-star teams and, and win as much as many rings as possible? Like, hell yeah, I do. Like, that's my brother, man. Like, I've, I've been with him since, literally since I was born. So, um, you know, I, it, it, it really doesn't make sense to me. Like, the more I think about it, I'm like, man, I'll, like, maybe – they would be jealous of their brother if that was their brother. But for me, no, not at all. Like, I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of Mikey for what, what he's done, him making it to the NBA. And now he's, now he's back in the NBA working as a, uh, working as a coach. And so it's, it's, uh, it, if, if that were to come true and hopefully this is the year, um, it would be a pretty cool thing. I know that we would all be pulling for each other in, in every corner. There would be no bragging rights. The only, the only bragging there is, is like, FIFA or, or golf or, or anything like that. Pool it's not not when it comes to our job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pool basketball is a big one. Well, I'll um, tell you this: you look yeah, really good pong, in the world I mean, baseball. Ping pong is ping, ping pong's a slaughter. They they can't beat me in ping pong. But uh, but yeah, when it comes to baseball, basketball, we're all on the same team. I can slaughter you in ping pong. Uh oh. Uh, Maybe if he comes no. through with the Dodgers, we'll have to pull out no, a ping pong is, table. It's, it, I mean, it's not even really a discussion. I, it's official. I beat Trace Thompson in the ping pong world championship. Yeah. Right? Am, am I getting that story right? I don't. I, I, I not that I remember. The only the only hard challenges in the Dodgers clubhouse I remember were Austin Barnes and Kirsch. Maybe, Barnes, maybe Barnes has that. Team, I yeah. think I beat. I thought you were you were on Clayton's team one year in the locker room tournament. That's not true. Refu- like, I refuse to play. In memory, 
We're just going to pretend that never happened. Refu- no, I've, 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 I've done one tournament. It was in 18, and I was with Walker Bueller. Okay. And we won. All right. Larry? So that's that. Maybe you were just there. Maybe I imagined you playing. Maybe maybe, maybe we need to walking. maybe we need to settle this when he comes through with the Dodgers. We'll have to oh. pull out a ping pong table and let the two of you guys go. Is this regulation size? Well, we can get I one. I got a ping pong table. Yeah. <laughs> I got a ping pong table. We can we, we can make that. That, we can make that work. I have a signed ping pong table from the 2015 Dodgers. Everybody on the team signed this ping pong table at the Kershaw Challenge ping pong tournament at the auction. I won That's pretty sweet. I didn't mean to win it, but I won it. That's really cool. Um, so now, yeah, it's a really cool item. I'm glad I got it. So, Trace, were you a little disappointed that Kirsch pulled out from Team USA so you could take him deep instead of Wainwright? Ooh, sorry. Yeah, you know, I well, I mean, if there was anybody to take deep, it's definitely Clayton. So <laughs> if I could, perfect, perfect world, if I could flip-flop the two, yeah, for sure. But I was – I was upset for him. I know he was looking forward to it. Um, who knows if he's going to get this opportunity again, just where where he's at in his career. And um, you know, it's a it's a fun thing, and and, it, and I'm sure the experience is a lot different playing for Team USA, um, and especially when you're Clayton Kershaw. So I, I know that he would have enjoyed the competition and just kind of the the higher stakes games. Cause I know he's not a big spring training guy as well. Um, but, uh, if, if anything, I'm more, uh, I'm more like empathize with him that, that he, uh, had to miss out. Cause I, I, I think he was looking forward to it. And, uh, there's not, a, there's not a more fun person to compete against. And, you know, he brings out the best in his opponents than him. And so, uh, so yeah, I wish, I wish we could have got a chance to, to face him, but, um, now, I mean, I, I'm hoping he has a perfectly healthy year and makes 30 starts or whatever it is, because I don't, I do enjoy our times that we face each other in live batting practices and stuff, but um, but that also means that he's coming off an injury. So hopefully this year we're done and I don't have to face <laughs> him again. But last year, you know, he, he got hurt and we face each other quite a bit and it's, and it's always really fun. And I enjoy it a lot, even though I don't have a lot of success off him. It's always just fun to kind of. He's just a fun guy to compete against in anything. And so, um, but yeah, for, for him personally, I was, I was uh, sad for him that he couldn't do it. So what's a successful year for you this year look like? Do you, have you thought about what you, what your, what you, have you set your own expectations, what you want to accomplish this year? Honestly, I, you know, I'm not a big numbers guy. Um, for me, it's just more so about focus and not giving away opportunities um, because, you know, I've had to kind of scratch and claw my way back to the major leagues and, and, uh, and really not take any shortcuts and, and kind of be able to look myself in the mirror and know that I did everything I could. And, um, but at the same time, having that conviction and belief that I can do it. And so, um, for me, it's just going in every day prepared and, um, with, with as much conviction as confidence as I could ever have and just kind of not giving away anything, not giving away a pitch and just going out there and competing. And cause I know I can do it. I know I can contribute to this team in a big way. It's just more, it's just for me, it's more so about focus and, and, uh, focus and conviction really. And so for me, I'm just trying to prepare each day. And like I said, not give away a moment or not give away an opportunity and just try to, you know, make the most of, every single day because, you know, it's a, it's a really long season, you know, six months, seven months, is a really long time. If you just take it one day at a time, you know, things and truly focus just one moment, one day at a time and, and stay present, you know, things will pretty much take care of themselves. Hmm. Yeah. I, I'd imagine you've gotten better at that. Um, over time, routine, thought process, things that you think. Um, so that's cool. Keep getting better at it. Yeah, yeah, we we're, we're, yeah. we want to see good things happen. So we're cheering for you, even from St. Louis. What do you What do you got today? Yeah. You got a big game tonight, is that right? We got Mexico tonight. Uh, I, I believe Taiwan Taiwan Walker's pitching. Um, but yeah, we <laughs> got Mexico tonight. Good. They're obviously one one of the better teams in this tournament. So it'll be a fun it'll be a fun night. Hopefully, there's a lot of fans there. I know Mexico's had you know a pretty big draw every night that they've played. So. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be, uh, 
a good environment and it'll be fun. Love it. They Love killed it. Team USA the other night. Mm-hmm. They did really good. They did. That, that was that was crazy because we we played before them, and you could see when we were leaving the stadium. You could see everyone like the streets were packed and stuff. And so to see Chase Field, you know, packed from you know those seats behind them, play all the way to the top of the stadium was was pretty cool. I, I don't know if I've seen Chase Field like that since like 2001 when they're in the World Series. So um, that was pretty sweet. I'm sure it was really loud. And, you know, this is obviously a very strong Mexican, Mexican-American community. And so I think it was pretty mixed, like the crowd. I bet it was 50-50, if not like even a little bit more uh, Mexico fans. So it's kind of a cool atmosphere. I almost just wanted to stay for a couple innings. But, um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a cool thing. It was cool to see Austin out there, and, and it's cool for them to, to win, obviously. That's awesome. That is really cool. Any, uh, any words of wisdom for me on my podcast? I've got no, I've got nothing, man. You, you know, you don't need, you don't need any, you don't need any wisdom. You're as wise. If anything, I need wisdom from you. Although, I'm not. I'll see you for this ping pong match. That's all, all right. I'm gonna say. Right. I'll see you for this ping pong match. Yeah, we need to do that, and we can bring up some of those Kodiak. Uh... Oh yeah, we'll get, we'll get you. So, so, I don't know if we'll have this on the thing, but you were eating some cereal, some Kodiak cereal. We'll have, we'll have the good stuff. We'll have the real good stuff, Kodiak. We'll have all the top picks for you when you come in town St. absolutely Louis. we'll set up a little ping pong a little soiree we'll get it going there we go i'll be ready thanks hey thanks for stopping by trace yes thank you so much we hey, appreciate you your guys. time swing hey swing yeah. strikes take the balls that's a good plan all right man thanks for stopping <laughs> by see you buddy see ya Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode. We hope you enjoyed Trace, and uh, we know you did because he's he's always great to have on. So uh, enjoy uh, enjoy that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That that's that's all we're asking is like and you know subscribe. You don't even have to listen. Just like and subscribe. No, you didn't listen. You didn't listen. <laughs> so no, but seriously, we do appreciate it. We've been hitting. Uh, we've gotten over three thousand uh, subscribers, and we continue to grow. Uh, each and every day, um, and we are we are thankful and blessed that uh, you guys keep sharing the the episodes that you're letting us know a lot of good feedback. We've been getting a lot of good feedback lately, so we appreciate that very very much. And uh, with that said, we will catch you next time. Gonna do your little thing. Don't forget. All right. safe.